thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17. The more you know about Christ, the less will you be satisfied with superficial views of him. And the more deeply you study his transactions in the eternal covenant, his engagements on your behalf as the eternal surety, and the fullness of his grace which shines in all his offices, the more truly will you see the king in his beauty. Be much in such outlooks. Long more and more to see Jesus. Meditation and contemplation are often like windows of a get and gates of carbuncle, through which we behold the Redeemer. Meditation puts the telescope to the eye and enables us to see Jesus after a better sort than we could have seen him if we had lived in the days of his flesh. Would that our conversation were more in heaven, and that we were more taken up with the person, the work, the beauty of our incarnate Lord. More meditation and the beauty of the King would flash upon us with more resplendence. Beloved, it is very probable that we shall have such a sight of our glorious King as we never had before when we come to die. Many saints in dying have looked up from amidst the stormy waters and have seen Jesus walking on the waves of the sea and heard him say, It is I, be not afraid. Ah yes, when the tenement begins to shake, and the clay falls away, we see Christ through the rifts, and between the rafters the sunlight of heaven comes streaming in. But if we want to see face to face the King in his beauty, we must go to heaven for the sight, or the King must come here in person. Oh, that he would come on the wings of the wind! He is our husband and we are widowed by his absence. He is our brother, dear and fair, and we are lonely without him. Thick veils and clouds hang between our souls and their true life. When shall the day break and the shadows flee away? O oh, long-expected day, begin. From Morning and Evening by Charles H. Spurgeon